So I've got two two video two channels here regarding YouTube for you, and I'm going to put them in the notes. But let me show them to you briefly. Uh, this is the YouTube Creator Academy. YouTube's got its own uh, channel here where you can go and look at videos, great tutorial videos on uh, creating your fashion and beauty channel, building your team, getting started with live stream. Um, all of this so advice directly branding your content part three all of these videos directly from YouTube the YouTube Creator Academy there's also uh, the YouTube Creator Academy home page where there's all of these great new uh, channels and lessons that they've got out there this is a starting uh, this lesson here is basic uh, the purpose is to get better content and get viewers, turn your ideas into production, why branding matters. So all of these like lessons at the YouTube Creator Academy. And again, the links to these are in my notes, and I'll put the notes down a little bit later. These addresses are too big for you to copy at the moment, so I'm going to move on. But one of those is the YouTube Creator Academy main page, and one is the YouTube Creator Academy YouTube page. Those are some things you definitely want to look at to keep learning about all of this. Getting back to our own channel, if we look at the analytics screen, there's nothing really to show for it here. This is what's going to show you your traffic, your statistics, your views, the popularity of things. The point of all of this is you can get very detailed. Under analytics, you can look at it in real time. You can see these are my latest five videos, and these are the people watching it. Right now, I'm getting a lot of views from Los Angeles. So you can get up to the minute information about who's watching your videos. You can get these reports, very detailed reports, in other ways. Audience retention. It will show you minute by minute, second by second, when people are watching this video, their attention is here, and then it goes away. So that's telling me perhaps this video in general is not so good. But what if I've got a 20-minute long video? I might see the stats showing a lot of engagement in the first minute, then it goes away, then it comes back, then it goes away. That's telling me that people are jumping to different parts of the video. What did I do on that part? Oh, I taught this particular thing. That's giving me an idea. Maybe I can make another video focus on that part of the 20 minutes in a different, in a different way. A shorter part instead of the whole 20 minutes these two minutes were very popular so I'll make another video I wouldn't delete this video that's 20 minutes I'd leave it that's still gonna get you some traffic I would just add another video with a variation of what you're doing so all this data the devices people used who are your subscribers when did they like a video all of that stuff so there's nothing really to look at here but this is where you would look at your stats And lastly is the Create tab. This is one of YouTube's best secrets, the audio library. All the time we have the problem of creating a video and to really jazz it up, to really punch it up and make it interesting, we should add music. I'm not a musician and I don't know any musicians. So I have either the option to go into my CD collection and borrow a song, which you don't want to do, or go here where YouTube gives us thousands of songs to choose from that are okay for us to choose from. If we go to this screen, we can look at tracks, and we've got these columns. I can add them to favorites so I can keep coming back to them. I can look at genres. There's ambient, jazz, pop, reggae. I can look at them under a mood. Maybe give me uh, funky music, or bright music, or sad music. I can go into a particular instrument. Give me bass uh, instrument, strings. I can go to duration. Maybe I need a particular song that's exactly a certain length without me having to crop it and such. So I can go to duration. I can also then search. And they're all listed here. Now, I haven't... Yes? Question. 
you can download the music and then put it into what you're working on in your computer. Yep, because you've got the download button right there. So any song that you like, you can click to download it. It gives it to you in MP3, which is a very universal sound format, and then you can use it in Movie Maker or iMovie and add it to your video. That's what I did for us last week when I gave you guys a video, uh, an audio, an audio, and um, an audio file. I got, I searched around here, found one, and then brought it to class. The point of this screen is this: browse and download free music for your project. Uh, everything online, everything that is created artistically and such, is copyrighted by default. And therefore, if you're going to take that song off of your CD or out of your iTunes library, most likely you're violating copyrights. Copyright is the right to copy. Copyright means literally the right to copy or to use something. Just because you bought that CD doesn't mean you have the right to copy that song and use it other ways. Yes, you paid your $15 for it, but that's only for you to play it, not to copy it. You know how you see uh, on, on home video it, that, that big scary FBI warning that says this video has not been licensed for public use. It's basically you bought that you bought that movie, that DVD, for you to watch it at home, not for you to broadcast it for free on your YouTube channel or to get all your friends and family together technically and, and watch it. Uh, there are limitations to copyright and there's good and bad about it. Because what about the opposite side? I made this amazing song and I want to get paid for it. It got stolen and, and, and sent out 50,000 times. I lost $50,000 in revenue. So it's good and bad. Copyrights. We want to stay within the limits of copyright, especially on your videos, because if your video has some famous song, best case scenario is YouTube uh, deactivates your video. Worst case scenario, your channel is shut down. So all that you've done on YouTube is shut down. And there's very little recourse to get it back. Unfortunately, YouTube is so big, and it has to be under the assumption of guilty until proven innocent. So if you constantly use songs that you're not supposed to, they'll just shut down your channel, and it's gone. You can't bring it back. You have to start over. You lost all your views. You lost everything. The way to avoid that is to use music and content that is okay for you to use, such as your own videos that you are creating yourself, your own music that you're creating yourself. But none of us here probably are musicians. Are any of you musicians? No? So none of you here are musicians. Therefore, we will use the YouTube audio library with thousands of free songs that are okay for us to use. Let me just randomly play a song here. You won't be able to hear it because you don't have audio on yours, but I'll just randomly play a couple here. Let's see. Galactic Damages. Very dramatic, and that sounds perfect for my video on how to buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> we can do Witchy Bridges. We're all sounding way too dramatic, so I'll go over here to Mood Bright. Give me bright moods. Good. Dark park. That's perfect for my instructional video on how to program a website. <laughs> so all of these great video, uh, all of these great audio files for you to use. You just have to find it. Now, here's a catch. It's not a big one, but Here's a personal opinion. All of these are okay for you to use. Do you notice that some of them have uh, a little person there? To me, it looks like the men's room sign. But that's supposed to be a little sign here that says Creative Commons Attribution. Attribution. That means you need to attribute your video. That means you need to give credit to this song on your video. You can use this song, no problem, but you have to give credit for it. Those that don't have that icon, you don't have to give credit. Let's say I did want to use Brethren Arise. It's probably a slow song. Let's say you want to use that on your video. It's perfect for your video. What you have to do is, when you click the video to see the description, it says, you're free to use this song in any of your videos, but you must include the following in your video description. 
So you can use these videos, you can monetize your videos based on these songs. But what you have to do is take this piece, copy and paste it into your description, wherever you use that song. It's not so complicated, but I personally don't like that. I'm too busy to bother with that. I've got things to do. So what I do is, there's a last column here. Show me only songs with attribution not required. Then I never have to bother with giving credit because it'll only give me songs without attribution requirements. It may be a little thing, but for me, because I've got way too much to do, I don't want to remember to also go back and make sure I added these links to the original artist. Obviously, I care about artists getting their due and all of that, but I'm busy. So I'm going to turn this off myself, and whatever I search for, I also search under attribution not required, so I don't have to worry at all. Take that song, put it in my video, and move on. I don't have to credit it in any way. Yes. I'm trying to download one of the songs right now to see if I can get it into Movie Maker, and it doesn't seem to be going anymore. Getting that download error on. Well, it depends on your browser. Let's see on mine. I'm going to say I want Hit My Soul. So if I click well, on my browser, it's in Chrome. It's appearing down on the bottom. On Firefox, it might appear on the top right. <coughs> All right, so we've got a lot of great songs that you can use, a variety of styles. Try, in my opinion, to use attribution not required. But if you find a song that's really cool under attribution required, remember to attribute it. Or your video could be deactivated, best case scenario. Worst case, your video is removed. So you will get these notifications, these emails from YouTube. There is a content violation on your video. Click here to fix it. And you saw, oh, I forgot to give credit. So I'll go give credit, save it, and then I'm OK. Instead of dealing with that, perhaps only use songs, no attribution required. Um, notice also all of these various songs have some sort of bar right there. That's the popularity bar. Question? Can you download the uh, music thing that you have downloaded in the Windows default or any other? On mine, it automatically defaults to the desktop, but you can save it wherever you want, and you want to save it into your folder of your project. So the popularity is just that, that other people have also used this song. It doesn't tell you how many. So this could be a thousand other people also use Hit My Soul, or it could have been 40 other people. It doesn't tell you. Uh, there's no... There's no, at the moment, there's no um, s uh, filter up here to show you the least popular and the most popular. I think that would be useful. You may or may not care about this, but let's say, you know, I take this over to classical and then on a mood, well, classical is good enough. Let's say, look at it here. So some of these are very popular, like the Explorer Mix. Let's say that one's rather popular, and we've got William Tell Overture, very popular, of course. But then we've got over here Spanish Ladies, it's not that popular. The point of this is you personally have to decide. Do you want to use a song that everyone else is using? I don't know what everyone else is. I don't know if it's a thousand other people or 40 other people. It may not matter. I just want a cool song. I want to add it to my video. I do want the William Tell Overture like everyone else. The 11 minute version. It'll sound great on my, on my video. Or I may go, with a, go for another one that doesn't have that popularity. This one's halfway there. So the point of this is you're going to be using this song and possibly other people are. Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe you want a completely unique song. Well, then you'd have to look at the ones with less popularity, but there's no filter to only show you the least popular ones. You know, this goes on and on and on. Army band, uh, U.S. Marine Corps band, and so there's some of the villas. So you can get these nice versions of these of these songs. I'm under the classical section. Drunken Sailor seems to be very popular. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 
really? free to use. Free, you're free to use this song in any of your videos. Uh, I wish they would also have a way to organize by artist, because I want to see all the Midshipman Glee Club's tracks. There might be a lot of good ones. I suppose you could go up here, Midshipman Glee Club. Yeah, there we go. Let's blow the man down. Oh, blow the man down, goodies, blow the man down. There you go. So, lots of tracks to choose from. And notice, not only do you have... Uh, free music, you have sound effects. So what if you need a particular sound effect for your video? Afternoon crickets. They haven't come out yet. We have um, aggressive zombie snarls. <laughs> So you have all of these under categories as well. Animal sounds, cartoon sounds. Let's check out some cartoon sounds. Cartoon boing. So again, there's the popularity, and you can download them and add them throughout your video. Um, and all of these are no, create, no attribution required. All of these are fine for you to use without credits. <coughs> Alright, so you can obviously spend some time here. Audio library, any questions on this one before we move on? What happens if it's not long enough? Can you you replay it on Movie Maker, you add that song, and then you add it again, and then it'll play twice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Music policies, if there are any uh, songs that you really want to use, because actually you can use some famous songs, but it's not really worth it. If you go to Music Properties, you really need to use this Justin Bieber song. It'll tell you how you can use it. It doesn't give you the download to that song. You have to get it somehow. And then here, you view. This song is, you, you can use it, this song, this Justin Bieber song. If you use a song, its playback is viewable everywhere except Germany. So people in Germany will not be able to hear this song on your video. Ads can appear on your song. On your video. If you perform a cover, so if you play a cover version of this song, it then will be viewable, your video will be viewable worldwide. Let's see this one randomly. Zane's song Pillow Talk is blocked in 98 countries. You can click there to see the list of the countries. And if you do a cover, you can you can uh, see it, people can see it worldwide and you can put ads on it. So again. You, there is some ability to use some of these famous songs, but you have to look here to see what the limitations are, or in my recommendation, just don't even bother with these famous songs. There's plenty to choose from in the audio library. Question? I was just wondering if uh, it automatically blocks it. It does. It's smart enough, and its, it's, it's servers can analyze your video and recognize that song, and it'll automatically block it. And there's plenty of here that'll show up that says you cannot use these videos at all for any reasons. Let's see if I can <coughs> get an example. Uh, worldwide. I don't see the download. That's what I'm saying. You can't. You can't download, you can't download yeah, these. You have to get them somehow. You have to buy it on iTunes or on Google Play or somewhere. And then you can use them. These are probably locked down at the moment. Let's take a quick look. <laughs> Viewable everywhere except Antarctica. <laughs> 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 
So um, the uh, that's the music area. One more thing to look at. If we go over to the video editor, you get this different sort of screen here where it's YouTube's online version of a video editor. It's like Movie Maker. It's like iMovie. You can add video clips and all of that. The big downside is that you need to upload your videos to YouTube before you can use them here. This is not like Movie Maker that exists on your computer and your videos are on your computer for you to use. You have to upload them first to YouTube. And one of the big bummers about YouTube is that you create these videos and then you have to wait to upload them. Remember when we created the video and we clicked save and it took a little while for that little bar to go all the way across and it ended. You're going to then now start to have to wait for you uploading your videos. A one minute long video might take between one minute and five minutes and ten minutes to upload. It depends on your internet service. You might have a 20 minute long video that will take an hour to upload. It really depends on the speed of your internet connection at home. A lot of these Providers, Cox, AT&T, Time Warner, whatever, they're going to wow you with these speeds. They're going to wow you with these download speeds. They're never going to mention the upload speeds. Your download speeds are going to be 50 megabits. You're going to be able to download that video very fast, and your upload is going to be 5 megabits. So they're not going to tell you your upload speeds, usually unless you really check, and good luck getting 10 megabit upload speeds. That is slow. You're going to get 5 megabits, you're going to get 3 megabits, maybe you're going to get 20. Even 20 megabit upload speed, even 50 megabit upload speeds is slow when you're uploading a 500 megabyte file. So usually at schools we have really good connections and you're going to see this is going to go by really fast. You, do, you go home and you're going to get disappointed because you don't have the speeds that we have here. So we'll see later when we click the upload button how fast it'll go. What I'm getting at here is if you're going to use the video editor on YouTube, you're going to upload all three of your clips, and you're going to wait 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 60 minutes, I don't know how long, just for them to upload so that then you can start to work on them. So I don't really find too much use out of this. I usually do my edits in Movie Maker or iMovie and upload it. But what you could do here, I guess for fun or for practice on this screen, if you look at this Creative Commons screen, this is like stock footage that you can play with, that it's already uploaded and you can mix together the flowers in the park video, put the cityscape and put in a soundtrack and make a video. You can play with this. I don't personally find much use in this, but I can grab that clip and then do stuff with it and change the brightness and contrast and you know, again, the movie maker that we talked about or iMovie is better because you don't have to wait for all of these things to load up. So here I'm going to make a great video about the juxtaposition of the human condition in the city and in the countryside. But this is all um, stock footage. So that was the creator area. We looked at all the main sections. Any questions on any of these that we've looked at? Well, again, the main thing that we do on YouTube is share videos. So let's actually upload a video and see the nuances of that. If you have your video from last week, we can use it. And if you have any other video to show, we can use that. If you use my testing video from last week, you can make it private, you can delete it. This is a test account, you can do whatever you want. If you don't have the video anymore, I've got a copy of it for you right here. So if you like my video from last week, what you can do is minimize your windows and go to computer. Click double click computer at the top left, then open classroom data drive Z. Z is in zebra. Scroll down to find Campus Social 2, open the YouTube clip folder, and then from my video, from my folder, drag the video called Victor Campos Tech Review Tuesday. Drag that to your desktop to get a copy if you'd like to use my video. 
if you don't have it from last week. So drag it from my folder to your desktop. Just to remind you what that is. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos for the Tech Review Tuesday. Today I've got some new hardware for I. Let's see the camera. So as we see here, this has been Victor Campos for the Okay, so it's a video. It's uh, it's 43 megabytes and uh, one and a half minutes long. So it's a video. Let's go back to the dashboard. On YouTube and now what we can do is if you get the button here that says upload a video we'll click that or if you don't get that button you always have the ability on the top right corner to upload now that we are a creator on YouTube we can upload so I'm going to click upload a video from this screen here we can click the arrow to select the video. We can drag and drop it. We can import videos. If you've got a Gmail account, we probably have Google Photos. There's probably a lot of photos there or videos that you have already stored. We can bring them over. You can import your stuff from your Google Photos. From this screen, I can start a live stream. From this screen, I can create a slideshow out of a bunch of uh, photos or videos and I can go to the video editor but usually in this screen what you'll be doing is you'll be uploading a video before I select one then we've got upload this public upload it as unlisted or as private so you can decide what you'd like there this is my testing account it's I'm just gonna leave it public if you put it on unlisted or private no one else will see it I'll leave it on public. I'll click the big arrow and on my desktop I I put a copy of that video so I'm going to select it and open it. Now it's going to upload it really fast because we've got good fast uh, internet connection here. This has no bearing on the speed of your computer. This is the speed of your internet. So if you're at home and you don't have very fast internet you're going to see that ticking by very slowly. Yes. I uploaded the uh, project file from uh, last week. And it says the WLMP file is a project file, not an actual video file. Exactly. You're not going to upload the WMP file. You're going to upload the one that's MP4. So the video here that I'm uploading, um, it may go quickly, it may go slowly. <coughs> the longer the video is, the longer it'll take to upload. The slower your internet connection is, the longer it'll take to upload. We have several things to look at here. I'll go into details. Don't hit that publish button until I say. But uh, hopefully, did everyone get that uploaded? It's coming. Okay, you can you can wait for it. I can talk about these other items here. <clears throat> We have basic tab, translations tab, advanced settings. And so, yes. I'm sorry, I was trying to download, trying to download the one from last week off my email, the most download. So, are we supposed to upload yours movie clip one or the Victor Campos Tech Review? The one with my full name, Victor Campos Tech Review. Thank you. For that. That's the finished version. So. We have basic translations and advanced settings. If you activated monetization, you will also have a monetization tab. On the basic info, whatever, whatever we filled in on the default screen, remember that screen? Those things will fill in here. I filled in a few default tags, so they're here. If that tag doesn't apply, I can obviously exit out to remove it. If I want to add more tags, I can add them here. Let's say this one is, in my case, 
Motorola. I'm going to type a tag and press comma, and then it'll add it. So I can add question. Oh, it's in here, but it doesn't have the description. My description will I will find description. So I can add more tags here, more keywords about your video. And I can delete them. I can add a keyword, press comma, and it adds another one. I want to add as many as I can think of that are relevant about this video. These are the things that when people search on YouTube, they find your video. So on this particular video, I have tutorial, DIY, do it yourself. That one doesn't apply, so I'll remove it. How to, I'm not really explaining how to do anything. This is more of a review. So I'm going to write review, comma, and it adds it. I can write multiple words here, such as Motorola, Moto E, comma. So that's a tag. Someone might be searching that keyword on YouTube, Motorola, Moto E. That's what's in this video. So that is one tag. I have Motorola here and I have Motorola Moto E there. If someone searches simply Motorola, they might find my video. If they search Motorola Moto E, they might find my video. So these are the tags people could be searching for. I would think to write at least five tags here. So let's make some notes. Uploading video tips tags at least five relevant tags. To just put in five things like Star Wars, Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. Don't put in these popular tags just for you to try to get hits. That's going to get you thumbs down when people view your video that is not the right one. Then we've got the, the area for the description. I wrote a default description, so that's why that appeared. But if that doesn't apply in this case, I can remove it. I can add whatever I want here. So again, a couple of sentences here about what this video is. So I'm going to say Victor reviews the Motorola, Motorola Moto E for Tech Review Tuesday. This just might be, I'm going to write whatever. You don't have to write this, but I'm telling you, think about what to write on your videos, what people could be searching. This just might be the best uh, budget smartphone. Of 2016. I'm putting in there a keyword people could be searching for best budget smartphone or best budget smartphone of 2016. So I'm putting in here possible ideas of what people are searching for. And I can write as much as I want. But remember that when a video appears, so I'm going to write best phone of 2016. When people search for those keywords and these things appear, here I have very little place to show that. They obviously wrote a lot here, but it cuts off at a certain point. I can't exactly tell you how much to write because it seems to be rather random. Notice how much this is written here and how much is there and how much is there. So you want to write a sentence or two knowing that you're going to have a little place for people to see that. And even when someone clicks to actually watch the video, it's like you're going to see that down here on the description, it's still only going to show you a little bit of what they wrote. Someone would have to click show more and look at all that that they wrote. They went as far as to talk about the filming gear and another a link to some other video, make your own hologram the who made the intro so all of this stuff you can write a lot here but keep in mind perhaps the most important things should be written early on
And on this particular video, I think I've got it. I could go in, press enter, and write some more stuff like, uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and put my Twitter address. Pictures, Tech Review Tuesday, whatever. You can put active links here. Once you publish it, they will become active. Again, do not hit publish until I say so. We've got a lot to work with here. We can go back and edit this again if you've published it. But let's see how well we can do it before publishing. So I've got something here that entices people to go do this other thing. What if I've got a link to one of my other videos? So I can say, and watch our uh, review of the Moto X, the other phone, HTTP, whatever. So the link to that other video. I need the link to my other video. I add it here, and then it will become activated. All my videos do show up there on my list of videos, yes. But what if this particular video went viral? So I'm see I know that people are looking at it a lot. So I could take advantage of that by having more, you know, advertising for myself to other things. But it's also going to show up in the, um, the column on the right. It may not. Oh. It may not. For example, this video that shows up here has a video from Mr. Who's the Boss, Danny Wingett, Ash Taylor, Tech by Matt. My own video may not show up again. Oh, so you actually have to go to the playlist page in order to see it? Well, this is what we were saying earlier, that the more videos of your own that you create, or the playlist that you set up, it will guide people to more of your videos. There is another one. This is Mr. Who's the Boss, and he's got another one coming up here eventually, and another one down there, but there's, and there's another one there. But YouTube wants to keep you watching more and more videos, so it'll just keep showing you videos. And if you make more videos of your, your, on your own, of yourself, of your own channel, it'll show more of yours. Again, I can add hashtags here. So say something like follow our hashtag and pound sign pictures tech no spaces no apostrophes and symbols just the word run together once you publish this people will read this description see that that's a link they will click it, and all other videos that have that keyword will also show up when they search. So that's a good idea for myself to keep using this over and over. Does it that's gibberish. I just put it. I just put an example that that could be a link. Yes. Does your hashtag recognize that from the logo, or is that just for reading? Just for reading ease, exactly. It doesn't care uppercase, lowercase. It could be all uppercase, all lowercase. But I want to separate it like this so that I can read the word because I can't use spaces. And I wouldn't want to use underscores and other stuff as well. No symbols. Let me show you an example here. Analysis has become that, uh, a much that I worked on after the ad. This is a video that I worked on, Top 5 Investing Tips for Beginners. And it's 23 minutes long, so you might say people are not going to stick around to watch that. People do watch long videos, but here's one way to help people watch your long video. You might have seen this on some videos, but I'll show you this on mine. You can create chapter stops. You can create active links to jump to different points in time in your video very very easily the trick is you need to know where in your video to jump people to what second or what minute of your video the way to do it is we're writing our description and we just write a time code nothing special we just write 
15 colon 40. 15 minutes, 40 seconds takes you to that spot in the video. 0, 4, colon 21 takes you into 4 minutes, 21 seconds to tip number 4. The conclusion or disclaimers is at 22 minutes, 35 seconds. So all you need to do when we're, when we're doing this, however you want to say it, you could call it chapters, you could call it, um, what else could we call it, chapters, we could call it, um, I don't know, points of interest, it's usually chapters, sections, subjects. subjects, perfect, we can call it subjects if it's a long kind of video and we have different things we talk about. I'm going to call it sections. And our video is only one and a half minutes long. But let's say there's something very important at 32 seconds. So I would write 00, zero colon 32. That's a time code. No minutes, 32 seconds. And then however I want to write this, dash uh, step one. Let's say this is a tutorial on how to bake a cake. And I've got all of these steps. And I know that at two minutes and uh, 48 seconds is step two. Obviously this, this doesn't work with our video. Ours is only a minute and a half long. Our time code is jumping to a point that doesn't exist, so it won't work. But in our particular video, so it's a little cumbersome in that I cannot play my video at this moment to figure out what my time code is. I would have to go back to my desktop, for example, and play my video and make a note. Oh, I did this, this at this time. Tech review Tuesday. I did this at that time. It's really powerful. It has seconds. all. I did and this at 52 seconds. Count. So I would need to make a note. The credits start at one minute. So I'm making a note of all of the important parts of my video, as detailed as you want to be, like that screen right there about the Amazon offer. So you make a note of all of your sections or subjects of your video, and then on the description, you go in and write your time codes. And after we publish it eventually, this will be active. Just like this one here. I don't want to watch all this whole 20 minute dream. I want to go to the good stuff. So I'll click right here. Step 1, 1540, and it jumped me to 1540. Number one tip is wait. Okay, number two tip, invest in these two funds and you'll be rich. So do you find that people know they're supposed to do the read more? Because I've never done the read more. No, unfortunately, you don't really know. There's some people that will click on that read more and they will see all this great stuff. But notice what I did here. Without read more, I'm already sort of giving an incitement. There's something here. There's chapters. There's something. Some people will notice, some people won't. You don't know, but you might as well try it for the people that do. This video has gotten some pretty good amount of views, 373, lots of thumbs up. No one is thumbs downing it yet. Uh, and so there's a little bit of text here. Well, how are you enticing people to watch this? Because you can find a bunch of investing tips for beginners. The way I wrote this one, top five investing tips for beginners 2016. So it's the latest information. It's the top five of them. There's many ways that people would be searching for this. I searched for best financial advice, and this video came up. So it doesn't have to be the exact phrase, but this video came up. And I've got here the description. No doubt about it, investors are panicking in 2016. A panicked investor loses money, so don't panic. These top five tips will actually save your money and still help it grow even in periods of instability. So that's stuff that people could be searching for. Economic instability. There's those keywords. Got a few views. I can log into my control panel and see the, see the retention rate and see that it might go up and down. And that's okay. But if I set up chapters here, I can have people jump to a specific section and watch that section. And maybe come back and watch that section again if you don't get it. So instead of you trying to find where do I go in this 20, 20, 23 minute long video, I've got there where I can jump. Because you can do active links, notice I've got here special offer. Get more great financial info through this amazing book, The Elements of Investing. And that's my Amazon affiliate link. 
that's out of the scope of our class but if you go to Amazon you can set up an affiliate account that every t when every time someone downloads or buys something on Amazon with your link you'll make a little money off of that again I don't have time to talk about it in this class but you can go research it it's called Amazon affiliates my special link here people follow that link to that book and buy the book I get a little money off of that and I'm marking it there that's an affiliate some people go much further to say click here for our affiliate link or they get very detailed and say follow our link to get to help us out with some money however you want to say it, you don't even have to say anything you don't have to say that this is an affiliate link but I believe somewhere deep down in that agreement that we agreed to when we clicked sign up I believe in there it says you do have to be transparent about these sorts of things it's not that YouTube is going to be poking around and finding is this an affiliate link but perhaps they find out it's an affiliate link and you didn't properly credit it and it might hurt you at the very minimum you want to make it obvious like that that's an affiliate link same thing here send us an email through our link to get a TD Ameritrade promotional offer and there's our own link you can put active links in your description and people will click. Could click. Now it is buried down here in the show more so people might not ever see it. If it's very important for me to for people to click that think about putting it within the first three lines. So you have a bunch of space for you to write stuff, that's the description, and then you've got the title. That has a whole nuance that we need to talk about of the description, of the title of the video. Again, it should be full of keywords that people are searching for. And I've got here, Victor's Tech Review Tuesday Moto E. In my case, it took that title from the file name. The default is that it'll take the file name and add it to your title, which you can change, of course. And that's why I said when we were setting up on that screen defaults, I said don't put anything into the defaults because you're going to need to craft it anyway. And let's say I'm thinking, well, on all of my videos, I'm going to have the name of my company, Tech Review Tuesday, Victor Campos Tech Reviews. I don't recommend that too much because as you see most of the videos out there, the, the name of my company is not on the description here, and it's not on this one, the three most important rules of investing, and it's not on ETFs that look good after the market decline, and it's not on Warren Buffett's 10 rules of success. The name of the channel is always going to be nearby the video, so you don't have to waste the space of your title with your channel name. So I'm not going to leave my channel name there. Would I leave this as a good title? Maybe not. Why not? Too short. Not much. It's too short. It's not descriptive. It's too generic. I want to write something like review Moto E. That's okay. What about review Motorola E? What about the best budget phone? of 2016, Moto E. That's getting better. That's putting in these keywords that people would be searching for. Remember when we were talking about the types of videos, what if I wrote here, unboxing the Motorola Moto E? Then it's got that keyword of what people are searching for, unboxing. What if I'm doing a how-to? How to set up your Motorola Moto E. This is a kind of a review where I talk about it, so I wouldn't quite write unboxing the Moto E. I'm not really unboxing it. That's false advertising. False advertising leads to people giving you thumbs down. Too many thumbs down could prevent your video from finding more people, because YouTube sees it's not such a good video. The best budget phone of 2016, Moto E. And you can write a lot here. This can go on and on and on. Uh, and YouTube will tell you, are you sure you want to make a, a title that long? It's telling me right there, your title's too long. It'll let me do it. It'll just complain. And you still can go that far. And I've done it on one video because I needed to. 
look at this video right here. Running, what did I call it? Running Windows, in Windows, in Windows. Uh, a lot of people are doing this. Windows Phone. It's too competitive. Mine is not showing up here. Um, but I've got a really long title on one of them that goes on like that. And even like this one that goes off until two lines here. That's a pretty long one. So YouTube might tell you that might be too long. It might get cut off. But it'll still accept it. If you can get the, the gist of what your video is within the space of this box here, then your title should be visible. Then we've got thumbnails down here. Again, I didn't verify my account, so I don't have the ability. Eventually, I'll have a button here that says, Choose Custom Thumbnail. And then I'll be able to upload a thumbnail that I carefully designed, 1920 by 1080, for maximum impact to catch people's attention. Because looking at this one right here, if I scroll around, you know, look at how people have created these thumbnails that catch the attention the text, the product, some better than us. That one is clearly just running. That, that's clearly, clearly just a screenshot of somewhere in the video. It's not that interesting looking. Even like that one. Oh, there's mine right there. So, running Linux on Windows, inside Windows, inside Windows through Windows Phone. Give a big title. And on that, it's basically a video where I show off a computer inside a computer inside a computer. 1,200 views. Hey everyone, this is VM Compost, and I'm going to show you something really cool. So I've got my uh, Windows 8.1 Pro. You can watch that, but basically there's uh, Windows Vista running inside of Windows 7, running win inside of Windows 8, running Linux, running inside of my computer, I mean inside of my phone, and then right there. So people uh, seem to have uh, gotten some good views, 1,200 views. Uh, there's a few haters out there, so there's four thumbs down. Uh, that's not so bad. And um, the point of this is, I crafted that thumbnail. Uh, look at how all of these other thumbnails are all like, you know, a photo of the phone and such, and then you get to mine and it's very different. It's black and white text. There's no point in my video that has that. I crafted it myself in Photoshop. Uh, so any graphics software. I can't do that yet until I verify my account. So another reason why to verify. You can still set it public or unlisted or private there if it's unlisted. Again, no one can see this video unless they have the link. And if you see here on the left, there's the link to your video. If it's public, anyone can see it or find it if they search. If you set it to private, no one can see it unless you go through this process of also sharing it with people's email addresses. If you leave it on public, what you can also do is automatically share it to your Google Plus or to your Twitter. So if you turn those check marks on, it'll then have you connect Twitter. And when you publish this eventually, it'll then also send it off to Twitter. It'll say, I uploaded a brand new video. Here it is. If you want to craft the message that goes off to Google Plus or Twitter, you can write it right here. So let's say I will set it up on Twitter. Um, I'm not going to, but if you turn it on, it's going to ask you to log into Twitter. But let's say I turned it on, and when I publish this, I also wanted to tweet it for me. So I'll then tweet it and think in terms of Twitter, such as hashtags. You know, tech review, check this Motorola, hashtag Moto E. Right, I'm putting the keywords of the, of the tweet so that people might find it. And what YouTube will do is automatically embed the video into my tweet so people can watch the video right in my tweet. And these hashtags will become active so that people can click and follow the hashtag. Why didn't you, why didn't you have Facebook then? Facebook and Google are no longer friends. And so you're not going to be able to share directly to Facebook like this. 
we will be able to in, a, in another screen, but now we don't get it automatically like we used to. And then here, we can save it to a playlist. So if you click that to open it, if you have any playlists, they will show up here. If you've got a lot of playlists, you might have to search your playlists. I don't have any playlists. And this, again, is a way for you to organize your videos together into topics. And when someone watches one of your videos in the playlist, it will then automatically show the next video, not someone else's. So playlists are very valuable to keep people watching your videos. At this point here, I can create a playlist. I can select Create a Playlist. This will be my series of I don't know, phone reviews. So every phone that I'm going to review, I will add to this playlist. Every laptop that I'm going to review, I'll add to the laptop list. And these are also terms that people could be searching for. Make this public or not. You usually want all of the stuff you upload to YouTube public. There are per times when you don't want it, when you want it unlisted or private. It goes person to person. But usually you want all of this public so people can find you, so people can like it, comment it, follow you, also known as subscribing to you to build that audience. And now this shows this video will be added to the phone review playlist, and as I add more of these, I keep adding them here, grouping them together. And we can see later, we can share a video anywhere, and we can also share a playlist. So send someone a link to your playlist, and all your videos of that topic go along with that link. Don't hit publish yet, but any questions on this screen? Yes. This one up here? This one right here? You have to... Sorry, what's that? How do you get it? It's not a tag, it's a playlist. You click on there and then you create, create, create a new playlist. Alright, so there's this tab, basic info. There's translations. You wrote something in a specific language, most likely English, so you would set this to English. If you would like to, then also set this to other languages. If someone, if this video might be useful for people to find in other languages, you can set it to these other languages as well. Now, the problem here is you have to write this yourself. If you would like to get professional translation, Google will gladly sell it to you. Or you can find your friends that know another language. So if I do select, I also, so I'm going to set this one to English. My default description is in English, but I also want to add uh, German. So I'll go over and select German, uh, Swiss German, sure. So now I need to provide my Swiss German version language, German language version of this description. It doesn't do it for me. Even though Google has a whole built-in translation thing, it doesn't do it for you, does it? You have to manually go off somewhere to translate it, and machine translation is still a ways off. It'll get all the pronouns wrong and all of that stuff and the slang. So if you'd like to do this, this might be valuable. More people can find your video in the right language. This doesn't translate your video audio to any other language, though. It's still going to be in English. So this has some use and a lot of perhaps downsides. I'm not going to select to do any extra language, but you could if you wanted to. Advanced settings. Some of these come back from that other screen where we had our defaults, and some of them are new. On a case-by-case -case basis, I can uh, set up approved comments or not, show the top comments or not, or allow comments at all or not. Or Ratings. This is something here. YouTube license. Copyrights. You own the copyright of this video. You have two licenses. The standard YouTube one, which gives you protections. If your video gets uh, pirated and such, you have protection um, in, the, in, in the U.S. to take them to court and all of that. If instead you want to select Creative Commons with attribution, 
This is that anyone can take your video and do anything they want with it as long as they credit you again. So you can decide what to do here, but most of you are probably going to select the standard one. Yes, I want my stuff to be shared and such, uh, but it's still protected in case people abuse my copyright. Uh, if you don't care about that, if it doesn't matter to you, you can set the other one. There's no wrong answer here. If I activated monetization, I can say show my video everywhere or only show it in places that can be monetized. Some videos do not show up on some devices, on some locations, and you can't monetize it. So if I turn on monetized platform, my video might not be available everywhere, but at least it will be available in the areas where I can make money off of it. I can't select any of them because I never activated monetization. And I would recommend that if you have a choice between the two, just leave it on everywhere. Let your video, your video be found as many places as possible, even in a place that it can't be monetized. Because if you turn it the other way, people might not see your video. There's a discussion we'll have a little deeper a little bit later about captions, about adding subtitles to your videos. We'll talk about that in more detail later. But you've got here an option to select if your video has captions, you know, subtitles. You should select one of these, and they all sound weird. I don't know which one to select, oftentimes. My recommendation is probably you're going to select this first one. This video has never aired on television in the U.S. Most likely this video that you've uploaded to YouTube never was on TV, so probably you'll select that one. And then besides that, it's going to go on a case-by-case -case basis. What if you do have that commercial that you did run on NBC? It's your video. You can upload it to YouTube. Does it have captions, yes or no? Then you have to deal with this. So, so if it hasn't aired on television, then you don't have to put captions on it. You don't have to put captions at all on your videos. But if it has captions, it does want you to choose one of these. And then you have to parse, did it appear on television or not, or YouTube first, or before 2012, and all of this stuff. So it's a bit complicated. I just kind of recommend choose the first one. Most of us never had our videos showing on TV. If it did show on TV but it didn't have captions, this content is only aired on television without captions. Distribution yeah. options. Well, sure, but television commercials, for example, often don't. But I know, for example, there there is a big requirement for captions on a variety of things for the hearing impaired and such, and also uh, for any educational material. I believe it's state, possibly even federal law, any educational material for colleges, high schools, etc., that is video, must have captions. Remember, all the videos that I'm doing for you guys are not educational material. That's why I don't caption mine. But if you are doing it for, you know, government, uh, government educational videos and such, those should be captioned. It's the law. So it can be sticky. Distribution options allow embedding and notify subscribers. So once I uh, upload my video, do I want to let other people to copy a link to my video and show on their website? You might think, that's terrible. I don't want them to steal my video. Actually, you do want people to steal your video, to quote-unquote steal your video. You do want people to share your video because that's free advertising. Now, obviously, depending on the kind of video, what if it's my video that I'm selling? What if it's my motion, motivational, instructional video? I want you to buy that video. In that case, perhaps, don't let people share that video on their website. Most of the time, though, you do want your video to get spread out to other websites. That's how you get traffic. That's how you go viral. That's how you get more hits and sales. And every time you upload a video, do you want to let your subscribers know about it? Yes, this is a new video. Everyone check it out. It'll automatically send them an email or give them a notification up on the top right here. There's a new video from Victor's Bakery, Victor's Tech Reviews. Age restrictions. Prevents underage users from watching this video. 
This also removes the ability to monetize or promote your videos through different ad formats. So if I'm doing a video, Victor's Whiskey Reviews, and I don't want kids or under 21 people, or 19 depending on their locality, 18, if I don't want people under a certain age to watch that video, I should turn on age restriction. But then that prevents me from monetizing my video. Um, so most of the time, you will not need this. The way they protect on this is that you turn this on, and someone that wants to watch your video, it'll say, please sign in to verify your age. And if they are under the age necessary, they can't watch it. You can set your category again, your location, language, community contributions. Well, we're talking about captions and such, and we'll get into detail a little later. But if you want people to help you, your community to help you write the captions of your video, you can turn this on. You will, of course, approve those over on the community screen we saw previously. Recording date. This is one that I always tell myself I'm going to look it up, and I never do. If I set today, this video says it's from January 16th. I have to look up that when you set this to something, let's say April 1st. Let's say April Fool's Day. I have to look up that if this date that you write here will be the date that appears here, because this says published on January 16th. And this says recording date. So I, I, I set the date, usually the date that I upload it, and sometimes I change the date if I did change it on a recording date. But I forget to check if that was actually, if that actually applies itself here, which may or may not matter. Let people watch the stats of, let people see the stats of my video, yes or no. Again, if I've got almost no views, maybe I don't want to show that yet until I've got, until I've got 10 views, 12 views, 50 views, or something. YouTube has an aspect where you can create a YouTube video. It's very cumbersome. No one really pays attention to it anymore, so you can use that or not. The hot thing is the 360 videos, which is very complicated, so I won't quite get into it. And content declaration. This video contains a paid product placement or endorsement. This is different than monetization. If you've got a video, like my video right here, and in the middle of it I say, hey everyone, don't forget to, don't forget to buy the um, Motorola uh, one-year protection uh, for your phone. If I very literally and obviously in the video give an endorsement, buy this, subscribe to that, purchase this, if I'm very obvious about that, that's a, pr that's, a, that's a product endorsement. And if I'm getting paid by Motorola, or I'm getting paid by Intel or someone to promote their product in my video, I should declare that. And I should add the disclosure in the description and all of that. This is different than monetization. You don't have to turn this on for monetization. But in your video, if someone paid you in some way, goods or services or in cash donations or whatever, if someone is paying you to say something nice about their product, you should declare it. Motorola didn't pay me for that, so I don't have to. All right, any questions on this screen? You should declare it verbally. I think I've heard people say something. I believe it will tell you here if you go view it and then in, in the in the help section just uh, just be obvious about it if you activated monetization you will have a monetization tab I don't have one to show you but what you'll see on that tab is to turn on or off monetization per video a bunch of other little options would you like to show so right here how to monetize. We have pre-roll ads, mid-roll ads, and post-roll ads. So 
So pre is ads before your video. Mid-roll is during your video. In the middle, perhaps, or you know, three quarters in, or somewhere. It's somewhere in the middle of your video. And then, of course, post-roll is ads after your video. And you'll be able to turn that on and off if you have that monetization screen. I do want an ad here, but not an ad there. The more of those that you activate, the more possibility to make money off your videos. Let's um, finally publish that. At this screen here, after I published it, notice now it says, go off and share it to Facebook, or Blogger, or Reddit, or Tumblr, or Pinterest. So you still can share your videos anywhere, it's just that on the previous screen it would auto-share it to Google Plus and Twitter. Here you would have to go through the steps of clicking here, logging into Facebook, and then it will share it to Facebook. From this screen I can also get my embed code. This code here is the code that you would copy and paste into your website to show your video on your website. So if you've got a website, maybe you've got a blog, you've got articles, Here's an article that we have, how to use Peach, the social network Peach. So we've got some text, and we've got a video. And that video is off of our YouTube. That embed code that it gives you right here, all you just do is select it and copy it. And then on your website, paste it into your website when you're editing your website, and it'll put your video there. I recommend this for, for most of us. It's right here. Use YouTube as your video storage place. Then get the embed code and paste onto your site. I recommend that because these YouTube videos, the one we just uploaded was about 45 megabytes. And then I'm going to make another one, another 45 megabytes. I'm going to make another one. I've published 10 of them. What's 10 times 45? So it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You're going to use more and more space on your website. If you're uploading it to your website, you're taking up space on your website. You're going to run out of space. You're also going to slow down your own website. As you add more content to your website, you're going to slow down your own website. Well, YouTube, basically, for all intents and purposes, we have infinite space there. There's no limit to what you can upload. I've uploaded a three-hour long video. It can take it. And it has a couple hundred views. Um, YouTube never goes down, basically. It has infinite speed. It's one of the fastest websites out there. So upload your videos to YouTube and let video take care of all of that overhead and simply embed your video to your page and people can watch your video on your page like that. I can play that right there. Hello everyone, this is Victor for PMD Interactive. Let's take a look at the latest and greatest social network on the block and it's Peach. This is So that's a tutorial on how to use this network. It's on our blog but it's hosted, it's stored on YouTube. The embed code. Does the pop-up app that came up, that's different than the ad? Oh, is that called a mid-roll? No, that's a slightly different named kind of ad. I forget what that one's called. But that's another kind of ad. The mid-roll is that your video stops, oh. an ad plays, and then your video comes back. This one is one of these, I think they call it overlay ads. This is an ad that's overlaid on your video. So you so, have an option of yes or no on the yeah. So the way we would make money is they're watching our video here. They click on that to go look at the dash cam X500, and we would get a little money off of that. They can ignore it, or they can close it, and then we don't get anything from it. And lastly, we can email this directly to people. This is cumbersome. You're not going to be able to upload an email distribution list. 
but if you want to send it to individual people, you can. Can you embed a video that's a private video? Um, no. Okay. You can embed an unlisted video, I believe, but you can't embed a private one because it's private. <laughs> Let's click on the top right corner of your icon and go back to Creator Studio. And now that we've got something there, our dashboard shows your latest video, some quick stats, how many views, comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, analytics in the last 30 days in total, how many views your channel had, translates to how many minutes people have watched, how many subscribers you have. You can see more detail under View All. Here it'll be, start giving you tips. As you use YouTube more, it'll give you tips about updates, making good videos, so forth. Click on Video Manager and now on Video Manager again. Here's another place for you to see your videos. From this screen, we have different things that we'll do. We'll take one more break, and then we'll look at what else we can do under videos and a couple of tips to get views. We'll take a, we'll take a break now. Uh, 12, it's just about 12.20. We'll be back at 12.40. Um, let's do a short break because we're running out of time. Let's go until 12.25, uh, not 12.30, 12.25. And I need to take a quick break, so we'll all take a break until 1225.